Hello students, this is our lecture number 11 and today we are going to talk about multi-trading. Before we talk about multi-trading, let us understand the basic concept of the um, process and uh, trade, right? So, so uh, till now we had understood that there was a process P, there was a process P and it has got some set of instruction that will be executed by the CPU in some order, okay? So this way of executing the program, where program resides in the RAM or the ready queue, and CPU executes the instruction in some order, this is known as a process, right? So, um, and and it has some order of execution. So it is known as also, the process is also known as a heavyweight process because it executes a group of instruction one after another, right? Now, in contrast to process, there is something called, um, thread there is something called thread so um, so thread okay so in thread okay um, uh, we can we can we have uh, certain characteristics like uh, in thread thread has the id called or unique identifier called um, thread id and it has got program counter it has got stack okay so all this information or the resource will be shared among different threads so let us take the example suppose there is a set of code Okay, so there is a set of code, three codes. Okay, so this is executed by one thread, so T1, and this is executed by T2, and this third thread is executed by T3, right? So now this thread, T1, T2, and T3 have its own um, identifier, unique identifier, basically it's an integer. It has got own program counter, it has got own uh, uh, stack and register, and all these resources are shared with each other right so and the common to this are the code and the data so so code and data so our program consists of a pro uh, code and data okay now so uh, we can think this scenario as a, like a, this scenario as a thread and uh, these threads are known as a, um, a lightweight process so basically in short the advantage okay what is the advantage of using thread what is the difference between the mp and process and the thread in case of process you will be executing the instruction one after another whereas there is a possibility in a thread that you can execute the instruction parallelly concurrently so for example let me give you another example okay. suppose there is a matrix okay suppose there is a matrix Suppose there is a matrix and the size of the matrix is 3 cross 3, okay? Another matrix, the size of the matrix is 3 cross 3 and it has got some data okay, that I'm not worried about it. And the name of this matrix is A and name of the matrix is, this is B, right? So mm, now, when you perform a matrix multiplication between A and B, so what is the scenario? Row into column okay so main idea is row into column so this element is multiplied with this element plus this element is multiplied with this element plus this element is multiplied with this element and whatever is the result whatever is the result okay so that will be stored in the first cell of the resultant matrix right? that will be stored in the first cell of the resultant matrix so this is for your first cell now if you want to calculate the uh, same for the second cell what is the scenario okay same row into column row into column for example this cell into uh, this cell plus this cell into this cell plus this cell into this cell now i don't know whether you have noted down or not important thing to note down author is that in order to calculate in order to calculate the uh, result for this cell we did not wait for the calculation of this cell or vice versa okay so this is the advantage of uh, um, performing the task in the multi trading fashion okay so basically in short in short uh, process are the program in executions which are also known as a heavyweight process that executes the given set of instruction in some order whereas in case of uh, thread whereas in case of thread Okay, it's a basic utilization of CPU which consists of the program counter. Uh, it has got a stack, 
it has got its uh, set of registers it has got own unique identifier known as a thread id and all these will be shared among each other between the um, code and the data right so there are two different kind of thread that you can think of till now whatever you have learned about the process was a single thread of execution a single thread process because uh, as you have seen in this example that it's um, a process has a set of instruction and these instruction are executed in some order uh, kind of a single thread of execution so till now whatever we have understood was single thread of execution but now we are talking about multi thread of execution and whose advantage we have seen out here is that the efficiency or the time complexity will be very very high or in a, in a, in short um, there, uh, there will be less time that you can use or that you can um, within a less time you can calculate the uh, or you can solve the problem okay as shown in the matrix multiplication problem okay. so this is the advantage of uh, the uh, using multi thread i hope you have understood uh, so we'll move forward so multi thread have uh, let us see some of the examples okay uh, of multi thread say for example um, before that uh, now you have understood that using the multi thread concept you can execute more than one task in a given same uh, time frame okay say for example from time t1 to t2 you have you can execute three tasks four tasks okay depending upon the application and, or depending upon the program so let us consider some of the real time examples first web browser so in a web browser you have seen that somewhere in the one corner you have got the place to enter your um, user and the password somewhere there is a text that is being loaded somewhere there is an image that is being loaded okay somewhere there is an icon that is being loaded now you can see over there that uh, those all those components of the web browser belongs to different different threads one thread is responsible for loading the image one thread is responsible for validating the user id and the password one thread is responsible for loading the content text content etc etc okay some may be uh, lo uh, loading the um, icon okay so there are different different scenarios that we need to consider or that we need to uh, analyze it okay so uh, so you can see in the in the web browser one thread may be uh, used for displaying the image while another thread may be used for retrieving some other information in the web browser okay another example uh, all of you must have uh, typed in your like windows uh, doc okay? you, maybe you are writing an application or maybe you are writing some code or maybe you are writing some um, app, uh, paragraph right so while writing you must have analyzed as and when you write okay so whatever say for example whatever you type on the keyboard that will be displayed on the um, application or uh, word application okay now once you write down the word okay it is also simultaneously in the background if you check the spelling or um, if if there is any kind of uh, grammatical spelling error then it will mark with the red color right so those are the examples of the word processor in case of doc uh, uh, microsoft office okay or doc ms office okay um, next is the so, uh, and next is this, a web server okay you might request for some task to do uh, uh, say for example you are uh, asking the google to do some task okay it is giving you the uh, result and etc etc so there are many examples where uh, where uh, we use multi threaded uh, we have used multi threaded but we had not really uh, seen in that way so these are the some of the examples uh, uh, with the help of which you can understand the concept of the uh, how multi threading works okay um, so benefits okay responsiveness so uh, like uh, for example suppose you have written um, yahoo.com okay so uh, yahoo mail yahoo mail.com so in yahoo mail.com there are so many content that you will see so it may it may happen that some of the uh, some of the thread portion may uh, may be loading whereas another is already active right so in that scenario one thread may be very very fast and another thread may be very very slow okay so the responsive will be high okay if you follow the multi threading because depend upon, depending upon the size of the instruction assigned to different different threads the responsiveness will be high next is this resource sharing now as i've already told you that the um, in multi threaded programming the um, program counter the stack etc 
are shared among each other okay since they are sharing these various resources it may be register also okay since they are sharing the various resources of the computer system so resource sharing is very very high unlike the um, uh, process right so in case of if suppose there are two process and there are two thread that will perform the same task so then it is very very obvious that the resource consumed by the two process will be high as compared to threads because in thread and uh, the um, register okay the stack okay and the some of the content of the memory are uh, will be a uh, program bottle will be shared okay so that's why resource sharing will be high in case of the so the resource sharing will be high in case of process and resource sharing will be high it's low in case of budget trading now next is the economies in scale since i have already told you that uh, there will be a uh, um, uh, resource sharing will be low in case of multi trading so that's why uh, economy will also be low okay so uh, and in addition okay context there is something called context switch which is a time overhead and uh, and in case of multi trading it will be low next is the scalability now scalability means what is the throughput okay uh, what is the maximum amount of that that you can do within a given time frame okay so in case of uni processor system or single thread single threaded process you can execute one code at a same time Okay. However, in case of multi-threaded programming, and you can execute three codes at the same time. For example, suppose you have written some um, uh, code. Okay. Suppose you have written some code, and that does the same task. Okay. Suppose this is a process. Okay. You have written three lines of code. Okay. That does the same task as that of the thread. Okay. As that of this thread, and this thread has also the same instruction, but this one is assigned to T1. Okay, this one is assigned to T2, and this one is assigned to T3. Now, in case of process, what will happen is that first this statement will be executed. After that, this statement will get executed. After that, this statement will. So, for example, the time for completely executing these three is three uh, set of instructions. Suppose the time is capital T. Okay, T time is T1, and say for example the time required for this is um, x1. The time required for this is x2, and the time required for this is x3. Okay, x3. Now, uh, now, assuming that these three different statements are independent from each other, just like the matrix multiplication, then it's very very obvious that the time requirement for this process P, that is T1, will be greater than will be greater than x1 plus x2 i will not write plus okay comma i will write it x2 plus x3 okay so because these three uh, threads are executing are being executed concurrently or parallelly whereas here uh, these three statement will get executed uh, uh, in sequential fashion so that is the advantage of multi thread you can execute uh, you can do uh, in short you can speed up the execution of your process right or program now suppose uh, we have got a single core system and we have got multi core system so the first example you can see there is single core system and say for example you have got four process sorry you have got uh, you have got a program which consists of uh, four instruction and those instruction are independent of each other and the instruction each of the instruction is assigned to different different threads so first instruction is assigned to t1 second instruction is assigned to t2 uh, third instruction is assigned to t3 and fourth instruction is assigned to t4 now all these are the threads okay all these are the threads um, yeah uh, all these are the threads now in case of single core system you may assign these uh, threads to the uh, processor in this somewhere in this random fashion so t1 will be executed first t2 will be executed second and then so on so cpu will be switched one from one thread to another thread another thread another thread and so on this is how uh, in single core, core it will work right however if we have got multi core as per the now nowadays you can see in any uh, system you have got more than uh, one processor right? maybe two core code two processor a uh, core to do four processor etc or quad core okay? and so on so now suppose you have got two process two processor core one and two core two and the uh, t1 and t3 is assigned to core one and t2 and t4 is assigned to uh, core 2 t2 and t4 is assigned to core 2 so now you can see that uh, you, assuming that t1 and t2 sorry t3 and t1 are independent of t2 and t4 i repeat t3 and t 
one are independent of T2 and T4. So those instructions can be grouped together and assigned to the different different cores based on the independency and the execution can be done parallelly. So it will this this way of uh, executing the program will definitely speed up the program, right? Uh, so we move ahead. So now I will I told you that uh, uh, if you can execute the program in this way using the multi-threading concept. But still, to do this way, we have got several challenges like uh, how to divide the process, how to identify the independent set of process. Okay, and this is one thing. Next thing is balance. Now it might, it should not happen that core one is overloaded and core two is underloaded and all. Okay, so the proper balance has to be maintained. So how you will split the data? What will be the how you will keep track of dependency? And whenever there is a problem and all, how you will going to debug it or how you going to balance it, right? So all those things, uh, uh, there is a problem and, and although it, there is some advantage, right? So we can you can have a look further uh, in the book uh, for this uh, detail about the challenges and issues with respect to um, perform the um, parallel execution, okay? So now we'll move to the multi-threaded model. Okay, sorry, uh, multi-threading models. So there are basically three different kind of models. One is one to one, one to many, and many to many. Okay. So first one you will see is many to one. So in case of many to one, uh, uh, in case of many to one, this blue color, this um, blue color spiral kind of thing is not uh, is described as user threads. Okay, user threads means user task, user program. Okay, and it is this K is known as a kernel. Okay. Your core of the operating system. So, in case of uh, many to one, you can have uh, many user level threads. However, you have only one um, kernel threads. These uh, you many user level threads are mapped to one kernel threads. Okay. Next is the mm, now the problem out in this kind of uh, threading is if you uh, if one thread is blocked, okay. So, if one thread is blocked, it will uh, it will affect the remaining one as well. Okay? So uh, it will be very, very uh, difficult to, for performing the uh, um, parallel uh, concurrent execution in multi-core system. Next is the one-to-one. Um, uh, -one. So here, whenever you create uh, any user threads, uh, um, the corresponding kernel thread will be uh, created. Uh, so the advantage of this one-to-one um, -one is that um, you can perform many, uh, uh, many tasks. Uh, you can execute uh, multiple tasks within the same time frame or you can perform a concurrent task. So many tasks can be created and can be executed parallelly. So for example, you have created four uh, threads, okay, user threads. So corresponding four kernel threads will be created. So you are executing four tasks at the same time, provided there are four cores in the system. Okay. So uh, this is all about the one-to-one. -one. So each user level threads is mapped to kernel level whenever you create it. Okay. Uh, so you, can, you will have more con concurrency. Uh, as compared to uh, many to one, provided there is a uh, uh, hardware uh, criteria has to be satisfied. Okay. Now the last one is the um, many to many, where uh, there are uh, many kernel level, uh, many kernel level threads and many user level threads. They are mapped to each other. Okay. So um, this this is the diagram for the same. So this architecture can be accomplished whenever uh, whenever you can satisfy the um, the hardware um, criteria. Okay? So now let us now move to the different uh, thread libraries. So there are three different uh, thread libraries that we have. Okay, um, POSIX, okay, or P threads also we can say sometimes. And next is Win32 and third one is Java threads. So in this, uh, within our syllabus, we will only discuss the P threads or POSIX threads. Okay. So uh, how to create a thread, okay. So far we have understood till now, um, uh, in, uh, in the last session, how to create the uh, process. So we have used the fork system called to create the process. So now we will try to understand how to create the process. What are the steps that you need to follow, and what is the syntax and all. So first one is the thread creation. So to create the thread, okay, to uh, to work with the thread. First of all, to work with the thread, we need to include the p thread dot h. Okay, we need to include header file p thread dot h in order to work with the thread. Now first we'll see how to create the thread. So to create the thread, we have a function inside defined inside the p thread dot x. Name of the function is p thread underscore create, all in small case. And it has a four attributes or four parameters. First parameter is the um, address of the thread. 
okay here it's not written m person but actually is the address or ident uh, uh, address of the thread next is the attribute that is given to the thread third one is in what is the name of the thread okay what is the name of the thread and the argument that is supplied into the uh, name into the uh, thread okay the argument that is given to the thread so this is all about uh, most of the time the second attribute will be null and, uh, and the last argument will be not provided you don't have anything to supply to it as an argument okay so this is first thing that is how do you create a thread now when this statements get uh, when this uh, uh, system call uh, i don't know whether it's a system call okay fine yeah it's the system call when this system call is executed um, it will return zero okay uh, it will return zero uh, else if it is negative okay it will it's a failure okay so you can check it if um, this return type of this is less than uh, zero then uh, error in executing p theta is created okay like that way just like the fox system call you can have a modification as per your requirement next is the thread id so as i told you that every process has a thread okay every process has a um uh, every pro sorry every thread has a id unique identifier that is identified by the operating system so that is defined with the help of this uh, p thread underscore t okay so p thread if i if you write p thread underscore t okay here there's some variable used instead of this i'll write it out here okay suppose you write p um, p thread underscore t and p id so this p id is the identifier in which the id of the thread created thread will be stored okay this is very very simple now once you do your task okay once you complete a task so you need to uh, uh, join it later on okay so uh, p thread underscore join is the function that you will be using it after accomplishing the task or after the thread is created and to terminate the uh, to terminate the thread we use the p thread underscore exit okay and along with the argument along with this function the argument is return type okay some maybe zero or something like that so uh, so now uh, now uh, let us talk about the termination okay, so there are diff there are different reasons okay there are different reasons for uh, uh, terminating the thread so um, um, you you can have a look on it uh, later on but uh, how do you terminate it okay there are two ways with which you can terminate it and that is first one is p thread underscore cancel or p thread underscore exit so most commonly we use p thread underscore exit and there are two different kind of cancellation asynchronous cancellation and default cancellation okay so whenever whenever uh, uh, or what is the meaning of asynchronous and what is the meaning of Deferred. Okay. So first, I'll talk about it. Uh, deferred cancellation. Deferred cancellation allows the target thread to periodically check if the thread should be cancelled or not. So it's kind of the uh, timer that we have already discussed. So at equal interval, it will check whether the thread has completed its task or not. If it has completed, well and good. If it has not completed, okay. Um, it will uh, it will keep on checking it okay so uh, somewhere, somewhere later on it was it is it is identified that okay it has not completed the task so it has to be cancelled so it will cancel such kind of cancellation is known as a deferred cancellation periodic check will be made so if it doesn't complete the task it will um, it will perform a deferred cancellation okay it will cancel the task okay and next is the asynchronous can, uh, cancellation which says that you need to terminate the thread okay so uh, you will be terminating thread immediately as and when it is required or demanded okay so this is all about the thread termination now we'll see the example okay suppose uh, suppose these are the uh, list of library you can have a look uh, slowly as and when you see the video so this is a global variable and uh, let me tell you what is the all uh, the program is all about so the program is all about in this program you have a two variable g as a global variable and local static variable sorry not local static variable s so what is the effect of um, values on s and g when you uh, when you create the uh, uh, when you create the process and update these values okay so one is static variable and another, another is global uh, another is global variable and i hope you will be you know that what is the significance of global variable and static variable okay uh, when you update it okay so this is all about it so first we will see uh, from the main okay so there is a main program in main and you have created a id where you will be storing the id of the thread so p thread underscore t so p thread underscore t okay and TID. TID is a variable where you will be storing the ID of the thread. Now you are running a loop because you are creating multiple number of threads. So for the first time, for i equals to 0, you have created the first thread. For i equal to 0, you will be creating first thread. So uh, the first thread ID is so TID. Okay. 
address you are sending it and then address you are specifying it okay you are not sending anything to this id so generally as i've already told you most of the time it will it is null and next is the uh, name of the thread okay so name of the thread is basically it's a function okay uh, a pointer function okay a pointer to a function so uh, it's a function name is uh, my thread fun and in which you are sending so you are sending what some um you're sending the id i want to print the id of this newly created thread so that's why now when it is created now uh, when this p thread underscore is executed for the first time the control will go out uh, with some uh, uh, long integer over here okay so that long integer will be will be stored in my id further and uh, and it will update it it will update the value of sn smg okay based on the scenario and it is going to print the static variable and global variable for this corresponding thread id okay after completing the task again it will return over here and i will be incremented to one again second thread will be created again same task will be done again third again the control will go back to the for loop again third uh, thread will be created so basically three threads will be created that will update the snz okay and based on the situation or based on the features and the properties of this type of variable snz uh, the uh, values will be updated accordingly now after completing this task okay after completing this task i have here i have not written thread under so just to make it simple uh, it will uh, exit it okay in the next example you have seen it will be seen i guess yeah okay so here you have not seen you can refer the book or the um um uh, or the lab manual for having the uh, how to use the uh, p thread underscore join so you have to use join also okay so these are the examples that you can see so um, just to summarize it up okay so threads are very very efficient for performing the multi threading to uh, increase the time to uh, uh, to uh, increase the uh, to execute the any task in faster way and concurrent way uh, so that's all for today if you have any questions if you have any questions please do uh, post it that's all for today thank you so much